Hello everybody, welcome back to another Britcent live stream with me, Stephanie. I hope you can hear me okay. Let me know in the chat if everything's clear. Uh, I have a couple of comments in the chat already. We have Abu, hello. Uh, Sun Young, hello again. And Hannah, hi. And Over the Moon and 123. And Shay, hello. Hi guys, how are you today? I hope you've had uh, a good day so far and uh, everything's okay wherever you are in the world. Um, here in the UK where I'm living it's um, it's not too bad. Um, the weather has been very strange lately as I might have mentioned before. Um, it's been on and off raining, hailing, sunny, windy, all different sorts of things which is really weird for this time of year. Um, but everything's okay. I had quite an interesting weekend at the horses. I think I mentioned last time that, that I was going to go there. Um, didn't win anything, sadly. <laughs> I did try um, a few times to bet on a horse. Um, it was really good fun, but I think I must have won about £10 in total. But we spent about... 50, so didn't really get that much back. But it was a good experience, it was really fun. <laughs> um, Shay says, how are you? I'm very well, how are you, Shay? Uh, you, it seems to be very hot where you are. Ooh, 41 degrees, my goodness, that's crazy. Let me check the temperature here. Okay, it's very different where I am, it's 13, 1, 3. So yeah, quite a difference. Where are you, Shay? Can you tell me which country you're in right now? <laughs> Sun Yang, I'm glad you can hear me okay. That's brilliant. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other news this week. Um, yeah, I don't really know. There's not really much going on um, in the country apart from, oh, I'm having my COVID vaccination this week. So that's exciting. Uh, at the moment, they are doing people who are in their 30s. So finally, it's my turn. And I've got my uh, COVID vaccine booked in, my first one, for this Thursday evening. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Um, I heard that, you know, some people I know have had it and they felt fine afterwards, and others have had kind of flu symptoms the next day. I'm hoping that doesn't happen to me, um, but you never know, so we'll, we'll have to just have fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to getting my first one, and my second one is supposed to be in August. So there's usually quite a big gap between the first and the second jab. So yeah, I will let you know how that goes when I see you next week. Have any of you had your vaccines yet? Um, I, I know a lot of you are quite young, so I don't know if you've got to that stage yet, but um, I'm wondering in your countries how, um, how far ahead they are with the vaccine. I know that in Korea, some pe people are still waiting. It's uh, taking time, but I'm wondering about other countries. Oh, so Shay, you're from Kuwait. Ah, okay. What about the vaccine in Kuwait then? Has there been? Um, is it? Is it? Is it going fast? Slow? How's it going? Hello to AR. Welcome back. Uh, Sun Young says there won't be any side effects. I hope not, Sun Young. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And one, two, three said the same. Oh, thank you. I hope. I hope not. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna try and mentally prepare myself not to have side effects. <laughs> So I don't know if that will work, but I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. Um, so today, guys, we're going to be talking about funny things that British people say. Now, I thought that um, I thought that this would be a good topic because, first of all, it's cultural. So it's quite interesting learning about other cultures when you're learning a language. Um, and I know lots of you are very interested in, it, interested in improving your English, hence why you're joining me today. So I suppose you might also be interested in um, some cultural aspects of, of Britain. Um, so I thought I would share some kind of 
phrases or let's say ways of speaking that are typical of Britain. And you know, British people who are maybe not language teachers might not realize that we, you know, we say these things. And perhaps to a language learner, they might sound really weird, or you might think, why do you say it like that when you could say it in this way, which is grammatically correct. Um, but I can assure you that nearly every English person uses these phrases and these words that I'm going to talk about today. So you'll have to tell me in the chat whether you've heard them before um, and you know whether you've even used them before. Maybe you've used them before. So we've got six of them and we're going to get started very soon. I'm just waiting to see if anyone else wants to join us before I get to the meat of this um, live stream. We've got SH who's just joined us. Hello, welcome, how are you? Shay, about the vaccine, the COVID vaccine says, I should take it, but I'm trying to avoid to take it. Ah, is that because you're, you're worried about the side effects? Um, make sure that when you use the verb avoid, you should put ing after that. So your sentence should say, I'm trying to avoid taking it. Yeah. Sanyang has commented about what I just said about culture. Um, and she says that they're interesting when learning a language. And I suppose, yes, they are. Um, cultural words are very specific to each country, aren't they? So they can be really interesting for learners as well. Hello to Palma. Welcome. I don't think I've seen you here before. And Maram. Hi. Your first time. Oh, I'm, I hope you enjoy it, Maram. Welcome. And Claire, hello, great to see you here as well. Thank you for joining us. Brilliant, we've got some more people in the house ready to get started. So, let me share my screen with you as per usual. I'm just gonna do that now. Here we go, there we go. Okay, that's my title page. Um, so, funny things only British people say. The reason I said only British people is because I've never heard, like, an American saying this, okay, or um, somebody from New Zealand or Australia. I can't be 100% sure that they don't say it, but I would say these are very typically British phrases and words, okay? So, let's get started. Um, we'll start with number one. I'm going to look through all of them. I'm going to give you lots of definitions, lots of examples, and also ask you a few questions as well. And then at the end, we're going to do a mini quiz, which is something I do each week um, just for fun so that you can interact with me and give me some answers in the chat. So please, if you have any questions, comments, please write them in the chat. We're going to start with number one. Now, this one is interesting because it's something that a lot of British people say, um, but it's not actually, like when you look at traditional British grammar, it's not actually grammatically correct. So when you see this, you might think, what? Why would you say it like that? Here we go. So one of the things people say is this, Now, let me know in the chat, do you think this looks grammatically correct? Would you say that I was sat there? Let me give you another example. I was stood there. Um, perhaps it looks a bit strange to you. Let me know <laughs> if you've seen this. Yeah, 123 says it's incorrect. It does look incorrect, you are right. What would you normally say that then? Instead of saying I was sat there, what would you say in correct grammar? Any ideas? Shay, you're on the right track. You just need to change the E to an I. I was sitting. I was sitting there. Very good. Yeah, exactly. One, two, three. SH says it's strange. <laughs> it is strange, isn't it? So you... Normally, in traditional grammar, you would say, I was sitting there, blah, 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 or I sat there, if you, if you just want to use the past tense, right? Yeah, exactly, Hannah, right. 
or I stood there. However, however, a lot of British people say this. They do. I promise. I say it as well sometimes. I might not say it to my students because if I say it to my students, they might think I'm speaking grammatically incorrectly and I don't want them to think that in a lesson. However, in conversational English, a lot of people use this form. So instead of saying, I, so this is basically a replacement for I was sitting there or I was standing there, which is the past progressive tense or past continuous tense. So normally, as you probably know, um, we use the past continuous tense when something is happening and then something happens in the middle of that. Yeah, so like an interrupted action. However, we use this form in the same way. I'll show you an example. So if you look at my first example here, you could say, I was sat there at my desk minding my own business when a bird flew into the room. So there you have it. You've got the main action, which was I, I was sat there, meaning I was sitting there at my desk. And something happened in the middle of that action, which was the bird flying into the room. Okay. In traditional grammar, you would say, I was sitting there. But in conversational grammar in Britain, lots of people, I can assure you, would say, I was sat there. The other example, we were stood in the rain waiting for the bus when a car drove past covering us in water. So again, traditionally, you would say, we were standing in the rain. So you'd use past progressive. However, many British people, you will hear them saying, we were stood in the rain. No. Hello, silver paper, welcome. Shay has a question. Are we going to look weird if we say I was sitting, like with good grammar? No, 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 definitely not. You wouldn't look weird because it's grammatically correct. It's just that a lot of British people say this as well, okay? So they would often, you, you would often hear British people saying this. Maram says, can non-native speakers say this? Of course you can. Yeah, if you're, if you're using it correctly, if you're using it like in these examples, then yeah, definitely. I have a question here from somebody. I'm not sure what your name is, but I'm going to answer your question. Is there any reason to use this expression? Um, I've been thinking about it. And I think a lot of people use it to kind of emphasize the fact that they were doing something when something else happened. Like in the first case, I was sat there minding my own business. So you're kind of emphasizing that you were doing nothing wrong. You were just there when a bird flew in, okay? Or in the second example, we were stood in the rain waiting for the bus when a car drove past. So we were doing nothing wrong. We were just there minding our own business, not bothering anyone when this happened. So we kind of use it a little bit to emphasize what you're doing in that moment. However, the equivalent grammatically correct, let's say, way is I was sitting there or we were standing there. But a lot of British people say this. Yeah, they say this a lot. It's normally with these verbs though, stood and sat. We don't really use it with other, other verbs, yeah? So you wouldn't say, for example, I was, I don't know, um, I was, what could be another verb? Like you wouldn't say I was climbed the mountain instead of I was climbing, yeah? It's only these two verbs, sit and stand, that we use in this way. So basically you use the verb to be, was or were. Um, and then the second part would be in the past simple. So sat is the past of sit and stood is the past of stand. Okay. And we only use them in the past because we don't say I am stand there. That doesn't work. It has to be past tense. I was, they were plus past simple. So it can only really be used like this in these examples I've given you. 
So let's see if you guys have written some examples in the chat. Sun Yang says, I was just saw birds when the birds... Yeah, so that wouldn't work because you can't say I was saw because see doesn't work with this. Only with the verb sit and stand. Okay, so Hannah, I was waited. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, you have to only use it with sit and stand. So, for example, over the moon says, I was sat in the sun and idly sipping a cool drink. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. Yeah, I was sat in the sun. Very good. Um, SH says, so after the verb, the be verb, do we use past perfect? No, so it's not past perfect, only past simple. So the, the um, second form of the verb. So Sky says, I was stood when my ex didn't show up. Um, yes, but you would probably add something like I was stood there or I was stood outside the cinema, maybe, maybe to imply that you were like waiting for your ex. So you might say I was stood there outside the cinema, but my ex didn't show up, something like that. Okay. So yeah, I thought this one would be quite controversial for you guys, because maybe you might, you, you know, maybe you, you haven't heard it before but um, I think it's quite useful because you will hear a lot of British speakers saying this in conversation so it's obviously conversational English only it's not grammatically correct so we do use it only in conversation informally you see um, and are those expressions used in past tense so always past tense yeah exactly Sun Young, I was sat under a tree, birds were sitting when birds pooped on me. <laughs> Am I right this time? Yes, that's fine. Yeah, so if you say I was sat under a tree when birds pooped on me, you can say that. Yeah, you could probably remove the part about the birds were sitting. You can just say I was sat under a tree when suddenly a bird pooped all over me, <laughs> for example. That's it. So there, there we go. That is number one. I thought you might like that one. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to show you is not grammar. It's more of a behavior, let's say, a behavioral quirk that British people sometimes um, use. Here we go, number two on our list of six. This word. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of acting for this one. Okay, so I might have to move my screen to a bigger one so you can see me. Um, so, right. When a British person says right in this way, with an exclamation mark at the end, normally this means they want to leave the room, they want to go or end the conversation, or they want to change the direction. Of the conversation. So the word right is a way of kind of um, exclaiming uh, that you like, well, saying that you want to change the situation. And something that British people do, especially when they want to leave a room or leave a group of people, is they say right and they slap their knees. Okay. <laughs> so what I mean is somebody might go like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me just, one second, transition this back to me so you can see me fully. A bit of acting. So they might go, so imagine you're, I don't know, you're at your friend's house having a cup of tea, but you've been there a long time and now you want to go. So the conversation is kind of ending slowly and you go, right, I'd best be off. And you start standing up, okay? Or, right, well, it's been great, but I've got to go. So you kind of stand up slowly like that. So people slap their knees like that and go, right. So that's a kind of good indicator in Britain that you are, um, you know, keen to go or end the conversation that you're in. So you might see a lot of people doing this, especially when they're sitting down, okay? When they're sat down, if you want to. Yeah, when they're sat down, you know, together and they want to get up, right, best be off, 
Yeah. Jamie, thank you for writing your name, says it's like an end signal. Exactly. It's like a way of ending the conversation without actually saying, right, I need to go. Yeah, or I have to go now. You just go, right, slap your knee, look around, and everybody will know <laughs> that this means, you know, it's time to end the conversation and get going. Okay? Exactly, Sky. <laughs> exactly like that. Jasim, hello, welcome. <laughs> so I've written a couple of examples. I'll go back to sharing my screen with you. Here we are. I've written a couple of examples here. A very stereotypical example, the first one. Right. Slaps knees and looks at wife. It's getting a bit late. Shall we make a move? Shall we make a move means shall we go? Uh, or another situation. Right. Slaps knees. I think I'd best be off. So these are good ways of using this uh, right kind of uh, conversation ender. Let's call it that. <laughs> so have any of you seen this before? Have any of you seen anyone doing this? And maybe if, you, if you're in the UK or if you have British friends, have you ever seen anyone do this before? Let me know in the chat. I'd be very interested to know if you'd seen it. Sky says, right, see you guys. Are you off now? <laughs> I hope not. There's more to find out. Hello, S-Y, hello. Over the moon says, right, I must get going. Yes, you can use it that way, very good. Yonso says, hello, Stephanie, is all right to use for the same situation? No, actually, no, we don't say all right, we only say right in this case, yeah. Very good question. Haylin says, even in formal situations? Um, yes, I would say probably, yeah, if you were having... Um, some sort of, yeah, maybe a meeting or, you know, yeah, I would, I would say yes, yes. If, if the conversation is ending clearly and somebody does that, then it's quite a clear, clear way of ending. It's not rude or anything. It's just very British, I would say. Yeah, because you know how we are, as I may have mentioned before, we're quite um, indirect. So it's quite a good way of kind of signaling that you want to leave, basically. Yeah. Shay says, I have British friends, but I've never seen them doing that. <laughs> Maybe they're not into the habit. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I do it sometimes. Not a lot, but definitely it happens. I've seen other people doing it here. Lee's never seen it. Um, Sky says, it seems familiar to me, like I've seen this in a movie or drama. Yeah, if you watch British films, British dramas, you might notice people doing this quite a lot, yeah. Um, okay, Okan says, can I say okay or good instead of right? Um, maybe you could say okay, but I would say right is probably the most common way, common word to be using in this, converse, in this situation, yeah. And Hannah says, I think I've seen this in films, there you go, yeah. I think films probably because it's quite a dramatic movement, so they probably would like to include it. In, in those, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, moving on to number three. So we're halfway through our list of six today. Now, this one, this one is very common. Um, and a lot of people, when they're, you know, expressing their likes, um, you know, showing that they really like something, yeah, they often say, ooh, I love her, and then they use a noun, okay? So probably you are familiar with using plural nouns when you talk about your likes. So normally in grammar we would say, ooh, I love, I don't know, I love horror movies, yeah? Or I love... Uh, I don't know, I love sports, I love rock music, I love chocolate, I love pizza, etc. Um, or I love, let me think of a plural one, uh, I love flowers, I love, yeah. So we normally would use plural nouns when you say I like or I love something in general, yeah? 
unless, of course, it's an uncountable noun. A lot of the time, British people might say, I love a, so they kind of make it in the singular form, such as, ooh, I love a curry. So, of course, this doesn't mean that somebody likes or loves one curry. It means they love curry in general, like the dish of curry. But people often use this way of expressing their likes because it sounds a little bit more exciting. Don't ask me why, but it really does. It sounds more exciting. So, for example, if you say, oh, I love curry, or, oh, I love a curry, the second one sounds much more interesting, much more enthusiastic. So a lot of people do this. Another one, oh, I love a thunderstorm. So imagine there's a storm outside, And I say, oh, God, there's such a massive storm outside. And my friend goes, oh, I love a thunderstorm. So you, yeah, you're, you're kind of really showing that you love that thing. Like it's really emphatic. Okay. And notice it's always singular. So a plus singular noun in both cases. Um, so let me give you an example. You could say, do you fancy getting a curry tonight? And the other person says, oh, yes, you know me, I love a curry. So this is a very typically British way of expressing their, their great love for something. Let me know if you've ever heard this before, any of you, especially if you've been in the UK or you've got British friends. Have you ever heard anyone saying this before? I will give you another example as well. A says, you must watch that drama on Netflix. It's got a massive twist at the end. And B goes, oh, I love a twist. So instead of saying I love twists, which is what you would normally say grammatically, they would say, I love a twist. Yeah. Shay says, I love an art. Mm, it wouldn't really work with uncountable nouns like art. Um, you can only use it with countable nouns, so nouns which you can use in the singular form, like a or an plus noun. Art, we never say an art, you know. Um, but for example, twist or curry, thunderstorm, so all of these words you can say a with them. Um, Hannah says, can I use this for person or music films, like celebrities or music? Um, you could say some, I don't think you could really use it with people. I, yeah, it would sound a little bit strange. Um, but maybe you could use it with music, like, a, like, um, for example, oh, I love a rock concert, or I love a boy band, or I love a pop, um, I don't know, a pop track, for example. So it has to be singular. And I wouldn't really use it for people. Yeah. Jamie says, I think British people use love a lot. Yes, love is a, obviously, when you use it for things, then it's, yeah, a strong way of saying that you like something. SH has said, I love a Netflix. Mm, that was, didn't, doesn't really work because you can't say a Netflix because it's an uncountable noun. But you could say, I love a Netflix documentary, because the word documentary is singular. You can say a documentary. So only use it with countable nouns, okay? So that would be okay if you added documentary to it. One, two, three says, I love a boxing. You can't say a boxing because it's not a countable noun as well. So that wouldn't work. But you could say, I love a boxing match, because a match is countable. Shay says, I love a chocolate milk. Mm, I'm sorry, milk is uncountable, so you can't use it with that. Only singular countable nouns. Over the moon says, I love a beach. Yeah, now that's okay, because beach is a, a countable noun. You can say a beach, two beaches, etc. So yeah, you can say that. Very good, Hannah. I love a rom-com film. Yeah, you could say that. Or you could even say, I love a rom-com. Brilliant. Yeah. Well done. Okay, I think you guys have got it. Well done. It's a bit weird, I guess. Like maybe 
you might think to yourself, why am I saying this? But it's a really typical British way of showing that they really, really like something. Yeah. Just remember the noun you're using has to be singular, countable noun. Okay. If it's uncountable, you can't use this form. You just have to say, I love Netflix, for example. All right. Sky says it's hard to be like a British person, a British, a British person. Yes, yes, it seems so. <laughs> it's tricky. Okay, so let me show you the next one. Oh, this one's fun. I've got a little quiz for you in the middle. So here we go. Number four. Something very typical about British um, conversation is that we love abbreviating everything. Okay, so we like to shorten words. If we can, we will. Okay, we'll come up with some kind of nickname for it or some sort of short um, word. Just going back to the chat, SY says, is curry countable? It is countable if you're talking about the dish of curry, like for example, chicken curry, that would be countable, but not the actual spice, if that makes sense. Okay, so the actual powder, like curry powder, that wouldn't be countable. But if you're talking about the dish itself, you can say a curry. Yeah. Shay says, what does abbreviating mean? Oh, very good question. Abbreviating means shortening. So we like to make every word shorter if we can. All right. So, for example, if my, my name's Stephanie, people don't call me Stephanie in England. Most people would say Steph or Steffi. So they like to shorten our names, okay? Or somebody's called, I don't know, Benjamin. Most people would call them Ben. David, Dave. Um, Samuel, Sam. Samantha, Sam. So people like to shorten everyone's names, not only names, but also other words as well. So can you guess what these mean? I have a couple of examples and I'd like you to guess in the chat what you think the full word is. Write your answer in the chat and then we'll see whether you got it right. So here we go. First sentence. You'd better take your brolly with you. Can anyone guess what brolly is? So this is an abbreviation. It's a short version of a word. What is the full word? Does anybody know what the full word is? Write it in the chat for me. Okay, we've got some examples in, some answers rather. Hannah, one, two, three, brilliant. Yunso, yeah, you're all right, well done. It is umbrella, very good. So instead of stay, saying umbrella, we often say brolly, brolly, um, which is short for umbrella. It's kind of informal, of course, if you shorten it to brolly, it's informal. But yeah, very conversational, very typical to say this. Well done, guys. Okay, another one, here we go. We had a sarni on the way here. Any ideas what a sarni is? Write your answers in the chat. What is a sarni? Has anybody, has anyone heard this before? What could it be? A silver paper's written an answer. Let's see if anyone else has an answer to add. Okay, yeah, a few answers coming in. Jamie over the moon. Well done, guys. You're all right. It is sandwich. Yeah, we had a sandwich. So instead of saying sandwich, you can say sani. Good job. Okay, I've got one more for you. Have you heard from Gaza? Gaza. Who or what is Gaza? Does anybody know the full word for this one? This one might be a bit more difficult, but give it a try. No answer is, is a bad answer. Just, yeah, give it a try. What do you think 
that could mean. 123 has suggested a city. Uh, it's not a city, no, but good try. Any other ideas, guys? Shay says, I feel like it's a name. You are on the right track. It is a name. I'll give you a clue. It's a man's name. Does anyone know? <laughs> it's not in Palestine. It's not Gaza. Mm -mm. But good try, Lee. I can see why you might say that. Silver Paper says, Gaza means let's go in Korean. Really? Ooh, that's interesting. I'll remember that. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to give you newspaper. Oh, good try. Newspaper. It's not newspaper. It's actually a man's name, Gary. Gary. I'll write them here. So these are the answers. Umbrella for the first one, sandwich for the second one, and Gary for the last one. Gary is a very kind of typical male name in Britain, quite traditional name. And if you are called Gary, your friends just like as a friendly kind of nickname, would call you Gaza. Gaza, a lot of the time, yeah. So it's kind of like a nice kind of endearing um, kind of pet name, I guess, for someone, Gaza. Um, if your name is Sharon, then people might call you Shazza. So Sharon Shazza. <laughs> so these are some funny ways that we like to shorten names, words, etc. Yeah, very, very typical over there. <laughs> I think I'm trying to think about Boris Johnson. What do we call him? Um, oh, people call him Bojo. Bojo. So instead of saying Boris Johnson, uh, who is our prime minister, by the way, um, people often call him Bojo, so Bo for Bo, Boris, B-O, and then Jo, J-O for Johnson, so Bojo, Bojo becomes, yeah, Boris Johnson becomes Bojo, yeah. Um, Sky says, Gaza has five letters, Gary four, where's the abbreviation? Very good question, I have no idea. <laughs> it is longer than Gary over the moon, you're right, um, but... Yeah, it's kind of like a friendly, this is more of a friendly one, yeah? So it's kind of like a cute or friendly way of calling Gary, Gaza, yeah. Not really an abbreviation, you're right. Um, but we love to give nicknames to people. Nicknames are really popular, yeah. Uh, Shay says, my name is Bashaya. My British friends call me Shay. There you go, there you go, yeah. Shortened your name. They love it. We love it, actually, shortening names, yeah. It's Maram says, how about my name? I'm wondering how it will be Maram. Hmm, it's not really a typical name, but maybe people would call you hmm, Ma, Ma, Maz, maybe, Maz? M-A-Z, Maza? Yeah, how about Maza? What do you think of Maza? Do you like it? Or Maz? My mother-in-law is called Marilyn, and we call her Maz for short, M-A-Z. So it's much, it is an abbreviation in this case, but it's also quite friendly, Maz. Yeah. So yeah, I think Maram, you could be Maz or Maza. What do you reckon? Do you think that sounds good? Are you happy with that nickname? Because I will use it next time if I see you. Okay, guys, we're going to move on to number five. Away from our abbreviations. This one might be quite funny for you as well, number five. Um, <laughs> Somebody might ask you this question, where does this live? That doesn't seem so weird, does it, that question? Um, however, how about if they do this? They point at a cup, like so. Where does this live? What do you think it means if somebody asks you, where does this live? And points at their cup. What do you think they're actually asking about? Any suggestions? Write them in the chat. This is, again, quite a kind of typically conversational thing. Maram says, I like it, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to call you Maza. That's it. <laughs> Lovely. Right. 
Sky says, put this on the shelf. Hannah says, where should I put this? Where do you put this from BNM? Yeah, exactly. Well done. Well done. Where does this live? Obviously, the weird thing is live, because obviously we're talking about an object, not a living creature. However, sometimes people say, where does this live? Meaning, where should I put this? Where does it go? Where does it normally go in your house? Like in the cupboard or where? Yeah, so Jensa says the origin of the cup or the right place that the cup is supposed to be. Yeah, the second part. So where should it be in your kitchen, for example? So for example, someone might say that cup lives in the cupboard above the sink. Okay, so instead of saying that cup um, should go there, yeah, um, we can say that cup lives there. Or those jeans don't live there, they go in the wardrobe. Okay, meaning those jeans don't go there. Uh, they or they're not supposed to go there or be put there. They go in the wardrobe. I think people say this kind of so that it sounds cute. I think it sounds quite cute, quite sweet. Um, yeah, like if you don't want to, again, it's about being direct, I suppose. So instead of saying, where do you put this or where does this go? It sounds a little bit cuter, more friendly to say, where does this live? Because it's quite like funny because obviously it doesn't actually live anywhere because it's not, you know, breathing. <laughs> But yeah, a lot of people use this um, this verb, live, like that lives there, that doesn't live there, where does this live, where do these live, to talk about things in the house and, you know, different objects, basically, yeah. So yeah, it could be a little bit weird or funny for you to hear this, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's quite easy to understand, it's not a difficult one to understand, it just might seem a bit strange at first, right? Over the moon says, where does this go? Yeah, so typically you would say, where does this go? So where does this cup go? But you could say, where does it live as well, if you want. Uh, Jamie says, it sounds funny. This guy says, it's fun. <laughs> there you go. Um, Sky handle, I'm not really sure what you mean. Where are this? Um, if you say are, remember it's plural, so you'd have to say these, T-H-E-S-E. So just watch out for singulars and plurals. But yeah, this is very typical here in Britain. Right, I've got one more to show you and then we're gonna do a mini quiz. So we're doing our last one on the list. Drum roll please, number six on our list is this, using different names for our evening meal. So, when you have your evening meal, what do you guys call it? Um, what word would you use to talk about the last meal of your day, your evening meal? So, we have breakfast in the morning, uh, in the middle of the day we have lunch, what do you have in the evening? One, two, three says dinner. Yes, that's what I say, personally. Do you know of other words that people use in England? Some of you are writing supper with double P. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Some people say supper. Very good. Do you know any other word? There's one other word that some people use, which is more common, actually, than using supper. So we have dinner, we have supper, and we have one other that people in England or Britain like to use. <laughs> it's not soup time. Okay, I'm going to put you out of your misery. Some people say tea instead. So should we say dinner, should we say tea, or should we say supper? Well, they're all right, there's no right answer, but apparently, according to my research, it does depend on where you live in the UK. Some parts of the UK, it's more common to use one word, and other parts of the UK, it's more common to use the others. And obviously it also depends on the person. So I personally say dinner. I never say supper, I never say tea for my evening meal. Tea for me is a cup of tea, okay? Or maybe tea in the afternoon, like maybe tea, like tea and cake, for example, or biscuits. But a lot of people, including my partner, says tea. They say tea. What's for tea? 
meaning what's for dinner. Um, supper. Um, supper is a little bit more, um, I would say, high class. So from my research, most people in the UK use the word dinner. Second place is tea and third place is supper. Okay, this is what I found out when I was looking it up to tell you guys. Um, only 5% of the people who were surveyed across, across the UK say supper. So it's not that common. And to me, to be honest, supper sounds a little bit posh. So maybe like rich people or posh people might say, what's for supper? Um, I think most people say dinner, but tea is very popular, especially in the north of England. I'll show you some examples using tea or dinner. So you could say, what are we having for tea? Or what are we having for dinner? Any of those. Of course, you could also say, what are we having for supper? But again, as I said, it's not as common as these two words. Or don't call them now, it's dinner time or it's tea time, okay? Meaning it's time to eat dinner, so don't call them, they might be eating. Um, Shay says, I like the word supper. Okay, well, you can use supper, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, Sana says, using tea could be confusing. Mm, yes, it could be because you might think you're drinking a cup of tea, right? Silver paper says, tea, do they have dinner for scone and milk tea? Mm, no, they're actually talking about, you know, food, like a proper meal. But some people do use the word tea for this, yeah. Welcome back, dream of Gavin Magnus. <laughs> You're just in time for the mini quiz. Yonsa says, so in some areas in the UK, tea has the meaning of dinner? Exactly, exactly right. That's right. B and M B N. M River says, I've heard supper from Downton Abbey. There you go. So Downton Abbey, they're quite rich, aren't they? They're quite high class. I've never watched it. They look like they are. So I can imagine them saying supper. Yeah. So here I've, I've got a little map for you, if you're interested. This was done in 2018, but this is the survey. And the question was, what is the proper name for the main evening meal? What do we call it? Do we call it dinner or do we call it tea? So dinner versus tea. And as you can see from the map, uh, in the south of England, it seems most people tend to say dinner, whilst further north, it's tea. So for example, Manchester, uh, Merseyside, yeah, they, they tend to say tea more often, whilst the other counties in the south like East Sussex, Essex and Kent they say dinner. I'm actually I actually live in Kent which is around this area like the south um, southeast of the UK. Um, it's about an hour from London by car and yeah apparently in my county we say dinner. Yeah again it really depends on the person. Yeah. So that's an interesting one. If you've never heard anyone say tea in this way, there you go. This could be, this could be interesting for you. One, two, three said, I thought tea time was around five. Um, I think, yeah, you're, you're kind of thinking about tea and biscuits, right? Yeah, maybe it is. But some people use it for the evening meal, like dinner, you know, like your hot food. Um... Over the Moon said, it's tea time. The fresh bread you made is making mouth water. Ooh, yes, lovely. Making my mouth water. Yeah. Sky says, they actually say, let's have a tea. Oh, don't use a. Uh, just say, let's have tea. Tea meaning dinner. Okay. Uh, Hyo says, how about green tea? Is that for dinner meal with vegetables? No, so we're not talking about drinking. So there's no drinks involved. It's just... The word tea can be used instead of the word dinner. So instead of saying, what shall we have for dinner? You could say, what shall we have for tea? Okay, and that means your evening meal. Got nothing to do with drinking tea, green tea. It's nothing like that. Okay, I know it's confusing, but that is very common in the UK, as you can see from the, from the uh, map. So we don't have much time left. In fact, we've, got, we've gone over time. So I'm going to very quickly show you um, the mini quiz. 
Um, I think I have time maybe for one or two questions. I'll, I'll squeeze them in. So here we go, mini quiz time, guys. So I want you, as usual, to read the question, look at the options A, B or C, and tell me which one you think is the correct answer. Is it A, is it B or is it C? You can just write A, B or C in the chat, okay? So again, a bit about British culture this time, because I remember you enjoyed it last time, British culture questions. So the first question is this, here we go. Which of these pasta dishes is most popular for dinner or tea in many UK families? Is it A, spaghetti bolognese, B, spaghetti carbonara, or is it C, spaghetti marinara? Which one do you think is the most popular one of these three for dinner or tea? in the UK. Write in the chat if you think it's A, B or C. All right, we're getting some answers coming in slowly, slowly. One, two, three has given me an answer, but not quite sure, huh? Silver paper as well. Yeah, we've got some others. Okay. <laughs> Shay says, I don't know the difference. Okay, we've got lots of mixed answers actually, but it looks like one, two, three, you are the winner. The answer is A. Well done, one, two, three. The answer is spaghetti bolognese. If you're not sure what that is, I have a picture for you. This is spaghetti bolognese, very typical dish. It's um, basically spaghetti, the pasta, with like a meat sauce, so it's like beef, um, usually ground beef, minced beef, in a kind of tomatoey sauce with some onions, with some garlic, salt, pepper, and on top people normally like to put some cheese like uh, parmesan or something like that. So that is spaghetti bolognese um, and it's very typical in a lot of UK families to eat this for dinner. It's pretty tasty. Camus says it looks nice. It does look nice, doesn't it? I could eat that, yeah. Lee says, I'm hungry. Oh no, it must be <laughs> snack time. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you another question. Question two, please write your answer in the chat. Question two, if a British person offers you a bevy, what are they offering you? Are they offering you a biscuit, a cigarette, or a drink? What are they offering you? Bevy. So think about what we said before about abbreviations. We like to abbreviate. Do you think it's A, B or C? Okay, we've got some answers coming in. Okay, yeah, very good. Some of you have got it. Well done, well done, well done. It looks like one, two, three is the winner again for getting it first. The answer is C. Well done. Yes, exactly, guys. Beverage. Beverage, yeah. So, bevy is short for beverage. Well done. And normally, if somebody offers you a bevy, it means an alcoholic drink. So, not just a drink, but some sort of alcohol. So, maybe a beer, wine, something like that. Um, Silver Paper said, biscuit is bicky. Yes, you are right. Biscuit is bicky. Well done. But we spell it with an I-E at the end. And what about cigarette? How would you shorten cigarette? Any idea how you can abbreviate this word? Let me know in the chat. So drink is bevy, biscuit is bicky. What's cigarette? How can we shorten cigarette? Siggies, Hannah, you got it right, Siggy. Yes, yeah, C-I-double-G-I-E, Siggy. So you can actually shorten a lot of things um, in English, as you can see. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to have to stop there because we've gone over time a little bit, but that's all right. I hope you have enjoyed this live stream and found it useful. Um, I will be here next week, same time. So starting at 2 p.m. UK time. Um, GMT and I'll be here next week with another topic. I hope I see you here. Have a lovely week and it's been great today. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too.
All right, take care. See you next week. Bye, guys.